Hi everyone, today is July 22nd, 2019, around 4.45 p.m. It is 87 degrees Fahrenheit outside, that's 31 degrees Celsius. And today I'll be taking you on a narrated tour of the Meatpacking District in New York City. This area has a lot of history, and as well as this confusing street grid, will make for a very interesting walk. So I'm going to get off at the southwest corner exit following the signs. Wow, something's up here. What's with all these police and military gear? Pretty serious. But the meat packing district, the meat packing district extends uh, on the northern boundary on 14th Street uh, from, I believe, 9th Avenue to the Hudson River. And then on the southern boundary, it's Gansevoort Street. So I'll be walking along 14th Street right now. This isn't officially the meatpacking district yet. Wow, there's like three police cars in a row. So, those cops posted at the entrance of the subway isn't all for show. Something must be up. Anyway, this is still the neighborhood of Chelsea. The meatpacking district. People need to watch where they walk. The meatpacking district gets its name from the numerous meat packing plants throughout the area back in the uh, mid 1800s to the uh, early 1900s that's when the meat packing plants were most prevalent once I get to the next block then uh, I'll be entering the meat packing district officially but now in the meat packing district it's uh, mostly a high-end residential neighborhood with some retail as well. This is as far west as the New York City subway system goes. It's on 8th Avenue in this part of uh, 14th Street. There are buses which will take you the extra avenue, but it's just frankly much faster to walk So now I'm in the meat packing district officially. Across the street is Gansevoort Market. It's a, uh, a food hall with many different uh, restaurants and places to eat inside. It's kind of cool. They have everything from like cheeses and Japanese and like Italian food, gelato. And if I'm not mistaken, off in the distance, that may be a very, very big cruise ship. I just saw the top of it go by. But this is 9th Avenue, the eastern border for the meatpacking district. One block north is the Chelsea Market. And across the street from Chelsea Market is the headquarters for Google in New York City. And inside the Chelsea Market is YouTube. Dos Caminos is at the corner here of 9th Avenue and 14th Street, a very good place to hang out and relax, get some food. The Meatpacking District is also home to all these cobblestone streets, the uh, historic cobblestone streets. That is why I wait for the light, everyone.
At that corner is the Apple Store. This area has actually been recently redeveloped by the city. Oh my gosh. I want to go straight and everybody is just hogging the intersection with no space to go. Here's Dior, Kiehl's, the uh, skincare company, Lululemon Athletic Wear. But that plaza I was mentioning before was redeveloped by the city. It took many years for them to do it, but now it's a very nice pedestrian plaza. It caused a lot of traffic in the area for many years. So for this walk of the meatpacking district, it's not too uh, big, the neighborhood, so I'll just be able to walk through most of it. But I'm gonna take this all the way down to the Hudson River show you the uh, Hudson River Greenway as well as the pier and then come back up Gansevoort Street to 9th Avenue and then I'll head back to uh, head back to Little West 12th Street and then West 13th Street All of these retailers have moved in since the meatpacking district. Uh, the meatpacking companies have closed up. This was back in the uh, late 1900s that these retailers started to move in. But let me just tell you a little bit of history about the meatpacking district. after I wait for this light. So originally, uh, before the colonial times, the meatpacking district was in hot, inhabited by the Native Americans. It was a trading station called the Sapo, Sapoan Panican. My gosh, I'm messing that name up, but it was located where Gansevoort Street meets Washington Street. And that street is actually within a one degree angle, either by accident or by design, of the spring and autumn equinox. But it was colonized and it was actually an upper extension of Greenwich Village but the street grid is so confusing here because um, it predates the commissioner's plan of, uh, of 1811. Here's the High Line. The High Line is the, an elevated park which runs through the area. It actually originates in the meatpacking district and it ends in uh, near the Jacob Javits Center. But anyway, this area became uh, very militarized. There was actually a fort called Fort Gansevoort between uh, 12th Street and Gansevoort Street, which I'll show you once I get down there. There's 14th Street from the western end, facing up towards the High Line. Here's 11th Avenue, very dangerous avenue to cross just due to the high moving cars. So the meatpacking district changed dramatically after the 
1870s after the Civil War, there was more development in the area and uh, a lot of these single family homes, they gave way to a lot of the industry. That's when all the, uh, the meat companies started moving in and where Meat Packing District gets its name. It wasn't until the, um, the 1950s, 1960s that the area started to decline because the distribution of all the meat products changed from a local level to a national level with the, uh, with the concept of the supermarket chains. So this area had a lot of immense pressure from that and most of the meat packing uh, businesses packed up and left, no pun intended. But then the area became known as a very undesirable area to live. Here's the Hudson River Greenway. It's a bicycle and pedestrian path going all the way from lower Manhattan all the way to inward in upper Manhattan running almost the entire span of the island. Looks like there is a lot of construction over here. There's supposed to be a public pier here also, but I'm not sure if I'm able to gain access to it right now. But anyway, in the uh, 1970s, this area became very notorious for its crime. A lot of uh, drug use was here and gangs owned a lot of the property. But there was a new industry that flourished once the meat packing businesses left and that were, those were all the nightclubs and entertainment companies. They also catered to a lot of the uh, gay clientele just due to the, um, the spread of the LGBT movement. Right now I'm facing the Whitney Museum of American Art. No, what am I saying? That's the, uh, the standard hotel. There's a good rooftop bar there. I highly recommend you to check it out. But that building in the distance is the Whitney Museum of American Art. The tall one behind it is the Freedom Tower, the World Trade Center. So in the 1980s, this area, the meatpacking district took a major decline due to um, a lot of the drug dealing and prostitution. It wasn't until the late 1990s that the area saw a rapid transformation with the uh, introdu introduction of all the high-end retailers and the area changed even more dramatically once the High Line opened in 2009 which I showed you one of the entrances before. Right behind the Whitney Museum of American Art is a meat packing company, Interstate Foods, so not all the industry left. Why did the goose cross the road to talk to Action Kid? What's up, Mr. Goose? Okay, don't wanna talk to me? Fine. Yeah, there's supposed to be a public pier here, but I don't think it's open. Actually, this area to the right of me used to be a sanitation garage. They used to ship a lot of the garbage out from here. But now the city is redeveloping it into something else. It's actually sad because this uh, sanitation garage area, it used to be the only stretch of road that was named uh, I believe either 12th Avenue or 13th Avenue, one of them. And it was kind of uh, 
what happened was 13th Avenue or 12th Avenue, I forget which one, it was uh, demolished because of the construction of all these waterfront piers. They couldn't extend the piers anymore towards New Jersey because it would disrupt the flow of the water and so the only option was to demolish the entire avenue in order to have the piers built. But there was one block of that avenue that survived and that was what used to be here. I'm not sure if it will survive once it reopens. But anyway, this is uh, where I'll get off the Hudson River Greenway and make myself to um, Gansevoort Street and continue my tour of the meatpacking district rather than the waterfront. As you can see, there's a lot of work to be done here. Looks like there's no public crossing there, so I'll have to walk a little bit further down I do see a pedestrian crossing one block ahead so it's not too far across the river is New Jersey That's Jersey City to the south across the river. And where I'm approaching right now to my right is Pier 50, uh, 51. Now it's time to wait for the light and cross the street. It's definitely a long detour for the meatpacking district. Don't you agree? Looks like traffic stops, but that traffic might go or may not. Big bus tour to my right, the top view. This building's undergoing some renovations or construction. Okay, I made it to Gansevoort Street, finally. Here's the Whitney Museum of American Art. Formerly, it was located on the Upper East Side on Madison Avenue until it moved down to the Meatpacking District.
It actually moved down to this location in 2014, so pretty recent. There's a pizzeria. This, I would assume, was a former meat packing plant. You can see a lot of the uh, architectural designs here. Now it's turned into art galleries and retail spaces. Very cool how the neighborhood has just changed into different businesses. They reuse the old buildings. Here's the end of the High Line or the start of the High Line Elevated Railway. I did do many walking videos of the High Line if you'd like to check those out. And you can see where they covered it up is where the High Line used to extend to and through these buildings. Another building on the construction, 60 Gansevoort Street. Probably a meatpacking building being reconverted into something else. But that means I will have to cross the street here. Bobby's brunch and lunch. Ampel Hills Creamery, a very, very good spot for ice cream. Their ooey gooey butter cake ice cream is out of this world. I'd highly recommend it. RL Restaurant is actually a clothing store. And this area is actually the location of Fort Gansevoort, which I mentioned before, the military outpost. Here's a meat packing building being renovated or torn down, I'm not sure. May. Work in progress, retail. So it will become retail stores once it's finished. Work in progress, commercial. This block is also where the late um, vlogger well, first of his kind vlogger Nelson Sullivan lived on the corner of 9th Avenue and Gansevoort Street. So my battery died, I just replaced it, but I'm continuing with this walk now. As I was saying, Nelson Sullivan is a um, videographer who lived through the 80s, unfortunately died very early at the age of 41 but he used to live on this block at this house at Fort Gansevoort. It's called Fort Gansevoort now. This actually used to be the uh, historic Fort Gansevoort building, but now this building was renamed to honor that building. It's actually an art collective. I see uh, a website for it and they host many artistic events. You can actually join right now. Here looking up 9th Avenue. This is Gansevoort Plaza, also a uh, city reconstruction project. The, so the sky is actually getting very dark very quick. It may rain, so I may have to use my umbrella soon, but there's not too much more of the meatpacking district, so I don't think I'll need it. Here's WeWork at the Meatpacking District. You can rent office space here and as well as uh, working spaces. Yes, the temperature just, uh, just dropped dramatically too, so inclement weather is coming, folks.
All right, making a left here. This is the boundary of the historic meatpacking district. There's water dripping from this canopy, probably just due to all the air conditioning. That's Troy Liquor Bar across the street. Another outdoor bar, the Brasserie. I think I just heard thunder. Looking north towards 9th Avenue and 14th Street. There's Sephora. So there's more uh, buildings here. Kamu phone. Meatpacking district. The issue of wealth inequality and homelessness in the city is a very important issue. I think it's very important to help the less fortunate in a way that you see fit, whether that's giving money or donating your time or resources. Personally, I give my time to uh, reputable organizations and money. I don't prefer to give money out to uh, random people on the streets. I'd much rather give food, if anything. Here's some retail space available. Fig and Olive Kitchen and Tasting Bar. Look at this, a historic sign. Super City Wholesome Meats, Wholesale Meats. So the meat packing district is still alive everyone. Right here. The Samsung store is to my left. Uh, I just felt a water droplet. There's the standard hotel right there on top of the High Line Elevated Park. Vans, Page, you can see all these businesses got converted into high end retailers. Won't have to worry about the rain if I stay under here. So I'm back at 14th Street, everyone. I was able to finish the video before the rain comes. If I have time, maybe I'll do a separate video on the rain. But if you like this video, make sure to subscribe, like, and comment, and stay tuned for my next video. Maybe it'll be in this thunderstorm, who knows? Catch you all later, bye-bye.